Loretta Young. Hello. I hope you're all happy at your house tonight. And in the mood for a little fun. Because our letter tonight is from a man, but it's about a woman. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed this letter because it's so clearly the viewpoint of a man about a woman and the various things that a woman is supposed to know best about. This letter doesn't need any answer. So all we've done is change my correspondent's name, location, and job, and let him carry on for himself. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe every word he says, listen. Dear Loretta, I am a good man. I do not ordinarily write to strange females. You, however, appear to have a head on your shoulders. A head, by the way, that bears quite a resemblance to hers, the subject of my letter. It all began one spring day in a restaurant. day in a restaurant off Madison Avenue, where I was minding my own business, which happens to be managing editor of the Manhattan, a magazine for smart New Yorkers. Don't tell me you bought a copy of your own magazine. Joe, I hate this cover. Look at it. Sweet, sticky, and sloppy. Where's the humor in it? Don't knock it, boss. Spring, two young people, toujours l'amour. <laughs> it's good for everybody's circulation. Uh, look, Joe, I am trying to edit a crisp, witty magazine. Freeze, boss. I better still just disappear. Your old friend, Scarlet on Nightgown, is about to attack from the rear. Oh, no. Excuse me, please. Hi, Mr. Baxter. Miss Joe. Remember me, Amanda Norman? Oh, yes, indeed, Miss Norman. We shall always remember you. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, look, Mr. Baxter, I want to show you something. Now, you remember what you said about the neckline? Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I hadn't changed it. See? Now, can't we please place our ad in your magazine? Uh, Miss Norman, I told you the Manhattan does not run ads of this, uh, this caliber. Uh, try but... the Parisian Gazette. Or better still, try life. And please, stay out of mine. Hmm? Oh, that's good. But most of the so-called human in your magazine escapes me. But that's good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Joe, uh, when you get back to the office, would you call Macy's and check with them about my electric blanket? It should have been delivered by now. Roger. Over and out. Goodbye, Miss Norman. Goodbye, Miss Joe. Electric blanket. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, it's spring. So I've been told, Miss Norman. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm uh, waiting for a luncheon engagement. Oh, that's nice. So am I. Oh, come on, Mr. Baxter. Look at that. Now, you do like it, don't you, Will huh? you please put that questionable art away? Here comes my publisher. Oh, and my date. Hi, Mr. Forbes. I'm over here. <laughs> good afternoon, Amanda. Oh, good afternoon. You two finally got together, I see. <laughs> I see you two have already gotten together. Yes, Mr. Baxter. I went over your head. But your nice boss here says you're the boss. Thanks, Mr. Forbes. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Baxter. Hmm? Electric blankets notwithstanding, it is spring, and the girls are here to stay. <laughs> Poor Steve. Hmm? He's becoming a resigned widower. Lives in a world all his own. Oh. And just what constitutes Mr. Baxter's world? and good night. Oh, please, Mr. Baxter. I won't take up two minutes of your time. I just want to prove to you how harmless my merchandise is. Now, they say that one picture is worth 10,000 words. So I thought I'd drive all fears right out of your mind. Here, would you hold my coat, please? 
Now there. Feminine? Yes. Marilyn Monroe? No. Does it look exactly like an evening gown? Yes. Could you walk down the street in Boston in it? Of course. Now, do I get my space or don't I? Space? Oh, please, Mr. Baxter. I promised my boss I'd get that space in your magazine, and I just couldn't break my word. Oh, well, I, uh, it looks okay to me. It does? Uh-huh. Oh, that's fine. Now, right here in my pocket, I've got a pen and a little thing I want you to sign. Come right over here, please. Right here. And just sign right there. That's good. Now, my coat, please. The other way around. That's right. Thank you. Oh, and uh, uh, if you'll forgive the expression, Mr. Baxter, nighty nighty. <laughs> I know it's late, but I just remembered. Tomorrow early, call my ticket broker. Tell Sam I want a pair of his best for all the hits. Oh, and uh, don't lock up the next issue yet. I got another ad I want to include. What? Oh, uh, Neron's 90s. Well, what's so funny? We enjoyed the theater and the midnight supper afterwards. We took in all the hit shows, and then all the flops, and then we started all over again. I guess we enjoyed each other. Finally, she invited me to her house in Connecticut for a quiet evening in the country. Mr. Baxter, you got toting privileges. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> Come on into my parlor. There. Oh, what a perfect man trap you have here. <laughs> you like it? Soft lights, sweet music. It's perfect. Mm. What could possibly spoil this? Uh, uh, Myron, my son. Myron, dear, this is Mr. Baxter. How do you do, Mr. Baxter? I've heard a lot about you. Uh, uh, how do you do, Myron? I haven't heard a word about you. Good. Usually Mom talks too much about me, huh? Oh, that's just because you're a good boy and I love you very much, so don't stop picking on me. Now, you just entertain Mr. Baxter while I fix my roses. Uh, uh, Amanda. Yeah? You're not married. Oh, oh, no. No, I'm in the same spot you are. My husband died five years ago. Oh. Uh, didn't I tell you? Well, no, you didn't. Oh. And as a matter of fact, I didn't tell you I'd been married either. Well, there you see. I knew about you, and I just supposed that you knew about me. <laughs> Not that it matters. Uh, I'll be right back. Would you please sit down, Mr. Baxter? Oh, thank you. Can I mix you a drink? Uh, well, sure. What would you like? Uh, I make a heck of a Roy Roger. Oh, fine. Uh, whatever you're drinking, Myron. Oh, I stick strictly to orange soda. You better try the R&R. &R. Ice. Sugar. Lemon. Bitters. Root beer. Certainly is a nice place you've got here, Myron. Thank you. 
We find it very comfortable. It's really more than we need. Mom makes so much money. She says we should live it up. Oh. Some people use plain soda. I prefer root beer. So do I. Garbage? What? Oh, sure, the works. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Thank you. I'm looking for my R and R's. What's this? I beg your pardon. What's this? I don't know. The other half of this. Oh. What's this? I run around the block. What's this? I don't know. Oh, that's a butterfly with a hiccup. Oh, no, not you, too. <laughs> Myron, I have something new for you. Now, put your hands like this. That's right. Now put one fist on top of the other. That's right. Now say wing, wing. Wing, wing. Hello. <laughs> I can remember that one. That's good, isn't it? Now, what's this? It's the end of a love affair. It all seemed like a horrible dream to find a girl like Amanda, fall in love with her, and then find out she comes equipped with a hot and cold running monster. What's this? 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 I didn't see Amanda for a while, but I knew I couldn't keep that up for long. If only Myron would go away on a trip. And then I found the answer. Right in my own magazine, I found it on the bottom of page 64. A small ad with two words in bold type. Two magical words. Summer camp. Darling, am I too terribly late? Amanda, darling, you're never too late. Oh, <laughs> you're sweet. How do you do, Mr. Baxter? Uh, Myron. Well, the poor little fella missed his train back to Connecticut. I hope you don't mind having an extra guest for dinner. Oh, I won't be any trouble. I watch television. <laughs> well, the television's in the study, Myron. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ma. Yeah? Guess what program I'm gonna watch? Well, I don't know. Knock, knock. Oh. Uh, who's there? Dumb. Dumb who? Dumb, da dum dum Oh, of course. That's one of his favorite programs. Such a nice little boy. Yes. And you know, he's quite right. He's absolutely no trouble at all. And you know something? He commutes every day. Hmm. He seems so uh, young to be working. Oh, no, silly. He commutes to school. Oh, no schools in Connecticut? Oh, of course there are. Mmm, that's nice. But it got so we never saw each other when we went to school there. And now we have the train ride in the morning and in the evening. And twice a week we can have lunch together. And then, you see, if I have to stay in town at night, then the Wilcox boy takes him back, usually. <laughs> uh, it's an ideal arrangement, all right. Ideal, you're uh, always together. But mm -hmm. don't you find it terribly inconvenient? No, oh, no, of course not. We have lots of fun together. Besides, nothing could be inconvenient where your own child is concerned. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, advertisers of ours. Oh, Kent Pinecone, huh? Doesn't that look inviting? Mm. In colorful Nova Scotia. Now, wouldn't Myron love that? Myron? Well, I can't possibly think why. Well, the sea air, uh, it's great for the lungs. Well, there's nothing wrong with his lungs. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, it, travel is broadening, and you know they say it's wonderful for little tykes to be out on their own for four months. <laughs> Steve, you're not serious. You're not suggesting that I send a six-year-old boy all the way up to the Arctic Circle. Well, the climate is different, you know, and uh, bracing and the... Uh... Well, there's money in being an Eskimo if you start in young enough and get in on the ground floor. Is that it? Well, I was just trying to... Uh... To what? Well... Uh... Stephen. Hmm? 
I don't think you like Myron. Oh, now, Amanda, don't be silly. I'm not being silly. I'm just being practical. I mean, well, what happens if we get married? We can cross that bridge when we come to it, after all. There's nothing really wrong with Myron. He's just a little bit spoiled, that's all. I suppose I do spoil him a little bit, but after all, that's only normal. I am the boy's mother. But then you couldn't understand that, because you don't have any children of your own. It so uh, happens that I have two, two little girls, seven and nine. Why, Steve, you never told me that. Where are they? At Briarhurst, uh, Wood, Briarwood in Virginia. It's a very fine school. Oh, what's wrong? Is Nova Scotia all filled up? Now, Amanda, don't be ridiculous. You know, you're really something you are. Here you have two little girls, and you never even mentioned them. <laughs> I bet you haven't even seen them in years. Now, don't try to turn me into a monster. Turn you into a monster? You are. Steve Baxter, you're a sick, heartless man. That's what you are. And if you're not healthy enough to love your own two daughters, how could you ever possibly love me enough to marry me? Oh, no, you go right ahead and send those poor little things from winter camp to summer camp and summer camp to winter camp. But not my child. He's going to stay home here with me where he belongs. You see, I just don't happen to think that my child is inconvenient. children in case you've forgotten. At least I hope they're your children. You just paid to have their teeth cleaned. Smile, kiddies. But, but I... I thought the dentist appointment wasn't until the 23rd. Yeah, well, today is the 23rd. All day. Oh, of course. Though, and it's so nice to see you, no matter what day it is. How are you, Nancy? Natalie? Fine. Well, um, come on in. Why don't we look pretty? Look at the kids when you say that. I'm a mess. Oh, and I have a date in 20 minutes. So, Daddy, you're on your own. Oh, uh, Joe, can't, can't you... Uh... Uh, no, I can't. Good night, girls. Good, Good night. night. Good night, boss. Well, uh, well, well. Um, well, don't just stand there. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. After all, this is your home. Uh, sit down and uh, take your coats off. And uh, I'll tell Cook you're here. And then we'll have some dinner, okay? Okay. Hi. Where's everybody? Daddy's in the kitchen. My name's Myra Norman. I didn't quite get your names. Well, uh, tell Myra in your names. I'm Natalie Baxter. I'm Nancy. I didn't know you had any children, Mr. Baxter. Where do you go to school? Uh, when somebody asks you a question, it's only polite to answer, girls. You're not babies anymore. As a matter of fact, Myron is two years younger than you are, Natalie. Age really has nothing to do with it. It just takes a while for some kids to get used to strangers. It's a matter of upbringing. I like people because my mother likes people. What's this? I don't know. The queen's taking a shower. Uh, you girls might laugh. Easy. I'll bring them around. What's this? I don't know. What is it? A ping pong game. What's this? What is it? A professional ping pong game. <laughs> What's this? I don't know. The other half of this. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> That was Myron's mother. What I tried to learn was whether a woman should put a spoiled child before love. I looked for the solution in the child's psychology books. It wasn't there. I guess there isn't any solution for me except 
to forget Amanda, which I am doing, and look around for a more sensible woman. Uh, Doreen, did I remember to tell you you look uh, very special? No, you didn't. And I'm hurt because this dress is brand new for tonight. Isn't it the end? I had to call out the militia to get into it. Oh, lucky militia. Oh, Stephen, I'm so glad we're having dinner in. Good. So am I. Uh, Doreen, do you like children? Stephen, I've only known you a week. Yeah, well, I was just wondering. Why is it men just don't know how to tie bow knots? There. And for good measure. <laughs> oh, uh, Doreen, I'd like to have you meet my two little girls. Yours? Mm -hmm. uh, Natalie and Nancy Baxter, this is Miss Drake. How do you do, Miss Drake? Not very well. Uh, you remember Miss Drake, girls. I showed you her picture on the cover of Vogue. Oh, yes. You were funny. <sighs> I'm a riot, all right. Uh, Doreen, we'll take the kids home, and then you and I can go someplace, okay? Goody. The zoo, maybe? What's this, Miss Drake? Uh, running around the block. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Uh, what's this? A large man having a small fit. No, no, come on. What is it, huh? A butterfly with the hiccups. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I have a new one for you. What is it? What's this? I don't know. A spider doing push-ups on a mirror. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Doreen, I'd like... Oh, she's gone. So she has. Yes. <laughs> Watch it. What's this? I don't know. Mr. Baxter and daughters, hoping that Mrs. Norman and son will join them for another scoop of ice cream. Oh, we'd be delighted. <laughs> Come on, Myron. Oh, you look beautiful. Oh, do I? Come mm -hmm. on, girl. Thank you very much. You look well. And you know, you were absolutely right. About what? They're really a lot of fun when you get to know them. Oh, but of course <laughs> they are. I told you that, remember? Well, Steve, thanks for your charming letter. And for supplying everything tonight, according to your postscript, even the answer. Congratulations to you both. And to your three wonderful children. You know, someday, if I ever learn to write as well as you do, I'll tell you how I met my husband. Meanwhile, I've taken the quote from Bobby Burns, because if that day should ever come, I'll need it. Oh, would some power, the gift to give us, to see ourselves as others see us. <laughs>